In this video, we're gonna show you how to do a form stack document automation using spreadsheets and Microsoft Excel. Let's dive in. Hi, I'm Kyle, the creator of No Code Collab, a site with tips, tricks, and tutorials for your next no code project. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and be sure to head over to our website where we have code snippets and other resources to help you during your no code build. So if you have made a Formstack document automation before, possibly using a text file or a, uh, or a PowerPoint, then Microsoft Excel is going to feel very similar. You add your tags the same way, you can use a lot of the same logic, but there are a few differences that you'll wanna be aware of. So let's dive into our spreadsheet and take a look at how we're gonna set this all up. Okay, so here I am inside of my example spreadsheet. This is a file that is generating an estimate based on how many of certain products someone might want. So I've got all my products on the left here. I've got their, their rate or their cost. And then I have the quantity that they want and then the total, which then sums up at the bottom as well. You'll see that there's a lot of errors and that is to be expected if you are doing any sort of calculation on the data that you're bringing into Formstack documents. So. Let's rewind one second. You'll notice that there are some of these uh, curly bracket dollar sign things all, all over the place. Those are form stack document tags. If you've done any uh, text files or PowerPoint files in form stack documents, those are going to look really familiar. It's the exact same thing here inside of Excel. Um, I am in Google Sheets, but all we need to do to get this to work inside of Formstack documents is save out as Microsoft Excel. So if you're in numbers, save your file as an Excel file. If you're in Excel, you're good to go. If you're in Google, you can uh, save out as a Microsoft Excel file as well. This is a document that just has one sheet. You could have multiple sheets and you could have your tags throughout multiple sheets. But just a quick review, if you are doing a tag, it is the dollars, it is the left curly bracket, dollar sign, and then whatever you want. You can give your tags whatever name you want. Just make sure they are all one word. They start with, with letters. They can't be all numbers. Um, don't use any punctuations. Keep them short, keep them descriptive so that when you're mapping your fields, you know, you know what they are. But basically, this is a tag and then you close it off with the right curly bracket. You'll see that I've got these other tags here product one, product two, product three, all that. So this is the start of our document. So you'll notice that I'm actually missing products four and product nine. And the reason for that is because I have a formula that is calculating the quantities for products four and nine. So if you look up here, we've got this formula. If we look down here, we've got another formula. Without getting into what those formulas are actually doing, the reason that I'm pointing this out is because you might think that you could just put your tag right into the formula. And the problem is when you put a tag inside of a formula, Formstack documents can't see the tag. It doesn't know that it's there. So you won't actually be able to map your data into that formula. What you need to do is put your tags in their own cells or in with other text. Once you're, it's in a formula, it won't recognize it. But if they're in their own cells, then you can reference that cell. So here I'm referencing cell F11. If I come over here to F11, you'll see that I've got product four. It's just in white text, it's basically hidden. So I've got product four in cell F11. And now I'm referencing cell F11, I'm referencing product four. So that is how you're able to build formulas, is you bring in your values, and then you just have to reference those fields with your Excel formulas. So that is one thing to know is that do not put your tags inside of Excel formulas. Put your tags in their own cells so that you can reference those cells. Second thing to know, if you have numbers that are coming in as text, so maybe it's got a dollar sign and some commas and periods, then your Excel file might not be able to handle the, uh, that, num that as a number. 
it will get confused and it'll think that it's text and then it won't be able to handle it as a number. So what you can do is you can tell Formstack documents to try to convert that number or what could be a text string, convert that to a number. And the way that you do that is you go pipe. So it's above the, uh, it's right next to the curly bracket. So shift pipe, it's the vertical bar and then just number. And this will tell Formstack documents to try to convert this to a number. I'll do it on a few of them here so that you can, you can see what's going on. The last thing to point out, if you are interested in hiding rows, so let's say in this example, we don't want to show any products that people didn't want. Any products that have a value of zero, we want to hide. So what you can do is there is a function called table if. And what you can do is at the beginning of a row that you want to hide, you go to the beginning of the row, you do curly bracket, table if, and now in this case, we want to show this row if product one is greater than zero. So we're going to say prod one greater than zero. And so now, Effectively, what we're saying is show this row, show this table row, if product one is greater than zero. And then what I do is I come to the end and I close out my, I close out my little function here. And I do that by doing forward slash table if. So now Formstack documents knows that if this equals zero, that's not true. If it's text, if it's blank, it's not true. It's not going to show it. It has to be greater than zero in order for me to show this line. So what I can do now is I can copy all those down and then I can just repeat this down the left-hand side for all of my products. There is a way to loop through sets of data. So you don't have to set each row individually. So if you have a dynamic set of data and you're not sure how much is there, you can loop through an array. It's a little more advanced than we're going to get into in this video, but Formstack documents and uh, web merge have some good documentation that will walk you through that. If you want to give that a Google, I'll put a link in the description. So I'm going to quick update this sheet so you can see what it looks like once we have all of the table if functions included. Okay, so I've updated my sheet. You can see I've got all of my product tags going right down the line. So these rows should only be included if the product or the quantity is greater than zero. So now let's head over to Formstack Documents and take a look at how this is going to work. All right, so I'm inside of Formstack Documents. I'm going to create a new document. And this is my example expense Excel file. I have my file. I'm going to use a... I'm going to use a Microsoft Excel file, hit next. I'm just going to say third party delivery, I'm not going to set up a delivery actually for this, but, and then I'm also going to use a data collection form. If you were wanted to collect this from a different source, say form stack forms, type form, whatever you would integrate with an external service. All right, so our file has been uploaded. If we look at the tabs across the top, overview at the beginning doesn't have much information. Manage file, we can look in and click on edit in Office Online. We can see our file right in here. You could edit it in here if you wanted to as well. I typically don't edit online because I've had, I've run into some bugs that, uh, just cause some headaches. And so I always just like to edit in the native programs. Then if I head over to my settings, I can see that I'm going to output it as an Excel file. And I always like to use my field map. So I'm going to save my settings. And then once I save it, now I've got another tab that has my field map on the top. So now I can validate that Formstack Documents is seeing all of my tags. Additionally, you can use the field map to like clean up. So if you were getting some text, you wanted it to be, you know, rendered as a number or different things like that, 
this is a place to do that. We're not going to get into that here. Uh, one other thing to note, though, is that if you had a tag that was in a formula, in an Excel formula, it would not show up here because form stack documents can't see that. So it's one way of checking to know that everything is, is accounted for. You can also check that in the test tab, but I always like to have my, my field map. Delivery, I'm not gonna set up a delivery, but you could send a box, drive, Dropbox. You can send up and set up an email. And then lastly, we've got our merge field, which if we click on this link, this has a form that we can submit and then we can use that to just trigger our document to run. Uh, so this is pretty rudimentary, but it is a way of not having to set up an integration with form stack forms, type form, jot form, air table, you name it. So that is possible to you as well. It's in the merge tab at the bottom. Okay, so let's go ahead and test our document. For the sake of this example, let's just say we want two of everything. All right, now we are going to click test document. And what's gonna happen is we are going to get a file that has all of our, all of our data filled in. So you can see here, my base rate was always set to one, but I've got two of everything. And now this is numbers, but it's referencing this other cell you can see that there was some logic put on that. And so that's why it doesn't equal two. And then also this one down here, even though I had two, there was some logic because it was referencing cell F16. And so that does not equal two as well. So all of the errors have gone away. All of my, uh, my tags have been filled in with my data. You do want to be careful as you're, as you're hiding rows and things, if you are referencing other rows and your formulas are referencing rows that might end up getting hidden, you, you, end, you might end up tripping up some of your Excel functions. So as you're hiding and showing rows, be careful of that because you might get some errors if you are um, monkeying with cells that are being referenced in a, in a function elsewhere. So hopefully that tutorial was helpful and you now have a better idea of how to update a spreadsheet with tags while also being able to include logic and hiding rows and making sure that your numbers are converted. So it's a really powerful thing to be able to automate your, your Excel files. So hopefully you're able to put this all to good use and save yourself a lot of time. Thank you for watching. Again, please like this video, subscribe to our channel. And if you haven't already, go check out our website where we have more code snippets and other resources to help you during your no-code builds. We'll see you at the next tutorial.